next season preview, I got the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, my starting lineup for them is Patrick Beverly, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Marcus Morris, and Serge Ibaka. Uh, Patrick Beverly is definitely a player I'm probably lower on than most. I just don't think his defense is as good as a lot of people think it is. Uh, and his three-point shot definitely took a bit of a step back last year. Uh, his offense as a whole has really never been much. And honestly, I just think they need much better playmaking at the point guard position. I still think that's a big issue with this roster that they still have uh, failed to address. And I think it's going to be a big kryptonite to them yet again this year. It's the lack of playmaking. If they could have got, got a guy like Ricky Rubio, I think that would have been massive for them. Uh, but they're stuck with Patrick Beverly at their starting point guard position. And I just don't think he's good enough. At the two, they got Paul George, who is definitely a player that I have pretty mixed feelings on because he... I know his talent. He's one of the most talented players in this entire league, and he has great moments. He is consistently a very good regular season player who will lead to wins in the regular season, but he has consistently failed in the playoffs these past couple of years, and what he did against the Nuggets was just an absolute uh, collapse. Like it was, it was atrocious how he played. It was embarrassing, especially because he talks so much. I wish Paul George would just shut up for a little bit because I think that would honestly put the spotlight off him and give him uh, less pressure but he continues to talk continues to uh, just say these ridiculous things and I'm really worried about him especially because he got that big uh, extension he needs to play well in this playoffs and at this point uh, in his career I've lost all my confidence in Paul George to be a consistently good playoff player like a lot of his moments he had some uh, very good games in the playoffs but he was consistently underwhelming and disappointing and I expect that yet again from him sadly at three, they got Kawhi Leonard, who, honestly, I feel like his playoff performance is way, like, blown out of proportion. He was really, really good in the 2020 playoffs, uh, and I know he was terrible in the Game 7, and that's when it matters the most. It was no excuse for how he performed. He performed terribly. He was awful in that Game 7, uh, but he still, at the end of the day, is a top-five player in this league. Some people are starting to really, really disrespect and underrate Kawhi Leonard, like, He's still one of the best players we have in this league. He's still an elite wing defender and one of the best scorers as well who is just so methodical as a scorer. Like, he doesn't do these crazy moves. He's not like Kyrie who is so flashy and scores so beautifully every time. He is just uh, very basic moves. It's like a one dribble pull up, but it's so effective and he's so strong and bounces off people. He's a great finisher. Kawhi Leonard is still one of the best players we have in this league. I think he's going to be out for revenge this year, and I think he's going to be really, really good in this year. At the fourth, they got Marcus Morris, who I hated uh, that they re signed him for the amount of length. Uh, for the length that they did and for uh, the amount of money that they did. I am a player, a person who's pretty low on Marcus Morris, especially because I had him on my own team. And though he is a talented player, he's one of those players who I th think he thinks he's a lot better than he actually is. Like a lot of the times, especially for the Celtics, he was stalling the offense a ton. And I think that's a really underrated reason to why that uh, the 2020, uh, the 2019, I mean, uh, Celtics just completely fell apart and were one of the biggest uh, embarrassments in NBA history is because of a guy like Marcus Morris and a guy like Terry Rozier taking shots away from the young guys. And I expect that to happen yet again with this team where he, at certain points he's going to take shots away from uh, Paul Jordan and Kawhi Leonard and he's going to be stalling the offense. But he is still a talented scorer who uh, can do a, a lot of different things on the offense side of the ball. I just don't think he's a, that great of a player, and they signed him to a pretty big contract. And at the five, they got Serge Ibaka, which I think that was one of the best pickups in the 2020 NBA free agency. I think that's a pretty big upgrade for Montrose Harrell, especially considering the needs of this Clippers team. They needed someone who can defend the rim well. Uh, Serge Ibaka can absolutely do that. He's not Serge Ibaka anymore where he was averaging like three blocks a game, but he is still a solid rim protector. And then he could shoot the three ball very, very well. He was killing the Celtics in that second round series in the pick and pop. I think he's going to thrive in the pick and pop this year. And he has good uh, chemistry with Kawhi Leonard. They were on the uh, Raptors team that won the championship. And I think he's going to be really, really good for this team. Uh, and it's if they do uh, end up being the team that we th thought they were going to be, I think uh, Serge Ibaka is going to be a massive reason uh, to why that does happen. Off the bench, they got Reggie Jackson, who is a player that I don't like too much just because 
he's a pretty inefficient scorer who uh, can sometimes be another guy who stalls the offense, and he isn't a good playmaker, which they need at the point guard position. They need better playmaking, uh, but I do like that they retained him because he actually was pretty solid for them in the bubble. Uh, shot the three ball pretty well, much better than he has his, most of his career, and actually was a more efficient scorer than he had been before, so I do like uh, them retaining him. Just hope he doesn't get like too big of minutes. And they got Lou Williams, who's definitely taking a bit of a step back. And I feel like uh, his age is finally starting to get to him. He seemed like a player who was just getting better with age. But it definitely looked like he took a step back last year. And he's basically always been a liability in the playoffs. Uh, I think except for that Warrior series... Uh, a couple of years ago, he's basically been terrible in the playoffs every single year. And every single year, he's going to get targeted on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, so I just think he should be a player that this team looks to trade uh, to try and get some more playmaking. Because even though he is a really talented scorer, he's one of the smoothest scorers in the entire league. I just think his defense in a, in a playoff series hurts way too much. Uh, and he's not as good of a scorer as he was a couple of years ago. And he's not a great playmaker either. So I just don't think he really fits on this roster. They picked up Luke Kennard, which was one of my favorite pickups uh, that almost anybody made. I thought that was a great move for them. They only had to trade Landry Shamit to do so. And I think that was a really, really good move for them. He is someone who's dealt with injuries throughout his career, which is by far my biggest concern about him. But when he's on the floor, he's a pretty good player. He can shoot the three ball very, very well. Uh, he is a good playmaker, too. Average like 16-4-4 four and four for the Pistons uh, last year. Was really solid, but only played like 29 games or something because he's dealt with so many injuries. But... I just hope he could stay healthy because he's going to be a nice player for them. And honestly, if he is healthy, I think he should be starting for this team uh, over Marcus Morris. I think he's a really nice player. Uh, they picked up Nicholas Batum, who is a player that has taken a big step back uh, in these past couple of years. Was amazing for the Trailblazers a couple of years ago. And they got signed to that massive uh, contract in Charlotte. Dealt with some injuries and just isn't the same player at all. His three-point shot isn't hidden anymore. I just think he's not that good of a basketball player anymore, to be honest. He's taking a big fall from grace. And that pickup is kind of uh, a nothing to me. I really don't expect him to get many minutes on this roster. Uh, they got Patrick Patterson, who is a pretty solid stretch big. Had a nice season for them last year. Uh, doesn't really do much else besides stretch the floor, but that's so valuable uh, in this league, especially as a big. So he's going to get some solid minutes for this team uh, and be good for them again this year. And then they got Avika Zubak at the backup five, who uh, is uh, pretty solid as a backup center. I uh, definitely like him a lot more uh, off the bench than as a starter, but he's a pretty good defender, even though he can't move his feet great. And against a guy like Anthony Davis, he was kind of he would uh, get exposed. Uh, but he is a good rebounder for sure. Good enough shot blocker. Good uh, interior finisher. Sets good screens. Rolls to the basket. Does a lot of the traditional big men thing. Doesn't do anything like special. He isn't like a playmaker or a shooter by any means. But he's just a really uh, solid backup five for this team. And then for the rookies, they got Daniel Toro and Jay Scrub. I uh, really like the Daniel Toro pick. He was one of my favorite players in the class. He's a center who can rebound, who can shoot the ball very, very well, uh, who can finish at the basket, who can post up very well as well. Uh, definitely don't expect him to ever get as much opportunity that he did at Minnesota, uh, but I expect uh, him to be a solid player for this team at one point. Don't expect him to get minutes this year. Probably will get some a tick in the G League, and I definitely like that pick. And then another pick that I like a lot, Jay Scrub. He is a pretty high ceiling player. Uh, played uh, at a uh, what are those called? Uh, I don't know. I can't think of what they're called right now. But uh, he played at a, a weird college. Uh, but he is a really, really high ceiling player. Uh, he has a lot of potential. He uh, definitely needs to work on a lot of parts of his game. But he is super athletic. Has some crazy athleticism. Uh, yeah, he played at a Juco college. Uh, and he put up some big points. Scored about 22 points per game. Needs to improve the three-point shooting. Needs to improve the playmaking. But I just like that pick a lot. He's going to need a lot of development. But I think he can be a really nice player for them at some point. 
Um, my team MVP for them is Kawhi Leonard. He's also my team defensive player of the year. I'm expecting Kawhi Leonard to be out for vengeance this season. Uh, I really, really hope he proves a lot of people wrong because he's one of my favorite players in the league, uh, and I just think he's so, so good. Uh, and I think uh, last season was a really, really uh, big stain on his legacy, so he needs to come back. He needs to be aiming for people's necks, uh, and I'm expecting Kawhi Leonard to be really good this season. My team most improved player for them uh, is Luke Kennard. It was really tough to pick a most improved player because these are a lot of uh, solidified veterans who I don't expect to get like worse by any means, but I don't expect to get much better. So I just put Luke Kennard. He's uh, one of the youngest guys on this roster, and I'm expecting him to be a really nice piece. If he stays healthy, like I said, I could see him being a legitimate uh, starter for this roster, being a great three-point shooter and one of the uh, only pretty solid playmakers as well. So I like that pickup a ton for them. My biggest storylines around the season is will they fall apart? Like, is this team about to be a massive disappointment again and then lose Kawhi Leonard, be stuck with Paul George and Marcus Morris? Uh, and they definitely can fall apart. Their chemistry was a big issue last year and was a big reason why the Lakers had the upper hand. Is because I think talent-wise, those teams weren't too far apart. Uh, but... The Lakers' chemistry was amazing, while the Clippers' chemistry was really bad. It came out uh, that the uh, superstars on this roster were getting uh, perifer peripheral uh, treatment, and that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I, like you expect superstars to get better treatment than the last player on the bench, but some of the stuff that came out was ridiculous, like Kawhi Leonard being able to show up uh, late to practices and even games sometimes uh, because he was living in San Diego. Uh, it was just a lot of things that uh, I could definitely see uh, why they rubbed uh, people the wrong way, and I think their chemistry might make them fall apart this season. And then can they even compete with the Lakers, even if their chemistry is good and if things go right? The Lakers got a lot better. So is this team even good enough to compete with the Lakers? I honestly j just don't think so. And then will the new coach in addition to help? They changed uh, to Tyron Lue as their head coach, picked up Serge Ibaka, picked up Luke Kennard. Will those additions help? Uh, and will those uh, push them over the edge to finally be at least a conference finals team? My expectations for them is to be a top four seed and a second rounder conference finals exit. Honestly, I think they're the fourth best team in this conference, especially with my worries about the chemistry. I'm taking the Lakers over them. I'm taking the Mavericks over them. Uh, and I'm taking the Nuggets over them. And I'd be tempted to take a team like the Suns over them as well. I'm pretty, pretty low on the Clippers this season, especially after what I saw last year. I was so confident in them being a championship team, and they disappointed the hell out of me. So I'm not letting that happen again. My expectations are very, very low and probably lower than most people's are.